You are looking at live pictures of the courthouse in Lower Manhattan. This is CNN's special coverage of an event the likes of which this country has never seen. This morning we are standing by for opening statements in a case that could ultimately put a former president behind bars. Donald Trump is charged with falsifying business records to hide a potentially damaging story about an affair with a porn star. This is something he has long denied. This morning, brand new details about the first witness the prosecution plans to call, a man who once led the National Enquirer and, as the New York Times put it, bought and buried stories that could be damaging to Donald Trump. CNN's Caitlin Polance is outside the court this morning for the latest on what we are expected to see. Caitlin. Well, John, those 18 jurors, the 12 jurors that will judge Donald Trump plus the alternates, they're all going to be coming into the courthouse by 930 today. And then we're off in earnest in this first criminal trial against Donald Trump. Opening statements will be taking place this morning. They're expected to start pretty quickly once the jurors have assembled for the day. And what they will be doing is previewing the contours of the case on both sides. So the prosecutors are going to give the jurors and the public a glimpse into all of the evidence that they have collected against Donald Trump and want to present to him represent against him over the course of the coming days. That's what their opening statement will be. And then the defense team, Todd Blanche, Donald Trump's chief attorney, is going to be giving his opening statement. We do expect that to be largely about witness credibility, trying to cut in to what the prosecutors are going to be putting on the stand. The first witness, that will be David Pecker. He's going to be called as a witness for the prosecution. He is the former chairman of the publishing company that was publishing the National Enquirer and is a person who has agreed to cooperate got a deal with prosecutors and is stepping up at this time to speak about very likely what he knows of catch and kill schemes. These schemes in 2016 that Donald Trump and his campaign were interested in uh, and his personal attorney Michael Cohen were interested in to collect negative stories about Donald Trump put money toward the people who had those stories, whose those stories were theirs to tell, and silence them. A very big thing, not just for Stormy Daniels, who is at the core of this falsification of business records case, but also for other witnesses who are like to, likely to be called to testify against the former president. Kaylin, how long will the opening statements be? Do we know? And just a little bit more on David Pecker, because you said he reached an immunity deal with federal prosecutors. What is it that he has admitted or conceded to in the past. Well, John, as far as opening statements, there isn't a time limit on how long these attorneys will go, but they're not going to bore the jury to start out this day. Typically, opening statements can take, you know, an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. I understand from my sources that on the defense side, it's not going to be very long at all. But as far as David Pecker being the first person up on the witness stand and what he's going to be speaking about, he is particularly attuned to what had happened with another woman who accused Donald Trump of an alleged uh, affair, a woman named Karen McDougal, who is expected to be testifying at some point against Trump during this trial, sort of to paint that portrait of all of the motivations of Trump to allegedly falsify these business records. And so he would be a person that can give a window into the entire atmosphere of what Donald Trump wanted to do and what may have motivated him in 2016 to want to pay off Stormy Daniels. Very, very interesting. Great explanations. Great to have you down there for this moment in history. Caitlin Polance, thank you very much. Kate. So before Trump's legal team begins laying out their legal strategy inside court, Donald Trump is doing his level best to have his say outside of the courtroom, lashing out on social media against the district attorney, the gag order, the fact that he even needs to be in court and more all this weekend. Part of his continued effort to manage the narrative before having to sit silently before the jury. CNN's Elena Treen has much more on this. She's joining us now. Elena, what are you hearing about Donald Trump's thinking going into this week? Because you look at social media or how he talked outside of court on Friday. He's, he seems angry for sure. He is angry, Kate, and I can say his public comments, his raging about this being unfair, his frustration with the gag order placed on him, all of that is also playing out behind the scenes. He very much does not want to be a criminal defendant in any trial, but this one in particular, I think, 
is very personal for Donald Trump. And remember, a lot of salacious details are expected to come out of this. You're going to be hearing from people uh, who have been very close to him in the past, people like Michael Cohen, his former attorney and fixer, as they referred to him. Um, that's part of the reason as well that he's very angry about this gag order because he's not able to attack witnesses. That's something that uh, he is particularly very frustrated about. But a lot of this as well could be embarrassing for Donald Trump, and he does not want this on display, particularly in the lead up to his next presidential election ahead of November. And, you know, if you think back to what this is really about, it's about alleged payments to a porn star that he allegedly had an affair with and then used hush money payments to try and cover that up during his first campaign ahead of 2016. And again, when it comes down to it, you strip all the bluster away, you think about Donald Trump, this is not something he wants to be sitting through. Now, I also just want to point out that as much as his advisors are saying, that they think this trial could help him with fundraising, this could boost his support uh, and donations. They really don't know particularly how this is going to play out because it is in a general election. What we saw happen during the primary when he was indicted is not necessarily going to be the same thing that happens in adrenaline. So I'd keep that in mind. Now, I also just want to point your attention to, Kate, uh, some of this uh, this interview we had with uh, the South Dakota governor, Christy Nome yesterday. She was speaking with Dana Bash. She had a very interesting to response about how it could be playing with some of his allies. Take a listen. If Donald Trump is convicted in this trial, will you still support him in November? If my choice is between Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump every single day of the week, yes, I will support Donald Trump. I have from the very beginning. Now, pretty stunning answer, Kate, from Christy Nome. But I think that just underscores as well how they're unsure of what could happen. If he is ultimately convicted in this, how will this play out? He knows, though, that he has his best defenders out there on the airwaves like Christy Nome, uh, rehashing talking points that the campaign has given them to support him. And so I think you're going to continue to see interviews like that in the days to come. That's for sure. It's good to see you, Elena. Let's see what today brings for sure. Donald Trump vowing to take the stand, insisting once again on Friday he plans to testify. Now, we have heard this from the former president before. In his civil fraud trial last year, he was set to testify for a second time, but he canceled with just 24 hours notice. Our panel is back. Uh, Ellie, uh, would you do it if you were Trump? Would you testify? I mean, can you even answer that question at this stage in the right. case? Right, so that's a, that's a really good question because the real answer is you cannot answer it. You don't have to answer it until the moment you take the stand. You get the, one of the benefits of being a defendant is you get to see the prosecution's entire case, see how your lawyer does trying to undermine it, see how you feel. But the short answer to your question <laughs> is no, hell no. Uh, I would not take the stand. I would not advise him to take the stand. There's no reason for him to take the stand. It's incredibly risky. Like I said before, the prosecution bears the burden of proving their case beyond a reasonable doubt. Anyone who takes a stand is taking an enormous risk. I know on TV everyone takes the stand because it's dramatic. It's quite <laughs> rare in the real world. Here, if you're Donald Trump, I mean, look, it would just be a disaster. He, if you get caught in a contradiction as a defendant taking the stand, it's over. If you get caught in a lie. If the jury doesn't like you, it's over. So I would beg, plead, urge him. I don't think he is going to take the stand. I think he's positioning right now. I just, it's so tactically self-defeating. I can't see it happening. Yeah, I mean, Frank, what is Trump doing there? It's, it's, it, it almost <laughs> seems to me like <laughs> he feels like, you know, people think he was a coward if he said no, yeah. basically. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. He has to be there, right? Well, he has to physically be there. Yeah. yeah. But he doesn't have to take the stand. Right. It's right. He doesn't him. have to take the stand. Right. I mean, I think this is the type of bluster. I mean, you asked Donald Trump, are you, are you man enough to take the stand? He's going to say, yes, I'm going to okay. take the stand. Yes. It's easy to bait him into that type of yes. And yeah. whether he means it or not, I mean, I don't know if he knows if he means it in his own head. <laughs> Matt, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think two short things. I, I completely agree with you. He's going to, of course, say yes, and then he's going to say, you know, well, you know, I can't do it for this or that. I, I completely agree. And I think Ellie makes a good point where the jury pool is so tainted against him. Him taking the stand, I, I, I could see he's sim simply poisoning it. But I think also it's important to remember his messaging about taking the stand isn't necessarily about the trial. It is about the politics of it. And I think he's speaking to a very different audience necessarily than the jurors. I think Frank put it pretty this is the same. This is the same bluff. Yeah. I think this is the same bluff he's calling on debates, to be honest with you. It's like he's, you know, he's kind of marching around saying, anytime, anywhere, of course I'll do it. I mean, you know. But at the end of the day, do I think he actually wants to debate Joe Biden? I actually don't think that he does. And I think it will be really interesting to see how that plays out. But it's like the same, it's the same bravado and it's the same kind of political posturing.
But it's at interesting the end of the you raise that because I'd be surprised if Biden is. I think Biden is the one that actually doesn't want to debate. But we can have I table think, that for another day. We got enough news. I would say, <laughs> look, I, I, he may not. I would say I, I actually think he should. I think anytime he is standing next to Donald Trump, I think it's a good comparison for him. It certainly was in 2020. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot that goes into preparing for a debate. So. Fair enough. I'll, I'll tell you right now what Donald Trump's out will be if, if and when he decides not to testify. He'll go, well, we just saw their case. It was a disaster. They didn't have anything on me. My attorneys tore down Michael Cohen and their joke of a case and their joke of a batch of witnesses. They got nothing. I don't need to take the stand. That's it. That's what he'll say publicly. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, that I mean, makes sense. I think that yeah. make, makes a lot of sense. And it's also, I think it helps that it's not televised, right? So if it was televised, then it might be a little different calculation yeah. to speak to the voters. If he's trying to filter it through the media, I think that's a good point. Yeah, if this were televised and he were on the stand, I, that's I, interesting. I mean, that would be yeah, <laughs> that would be a moment to yeah. stop and watch. Yeah.